Whoever sold this had no shame. The smell is kind of a combination of BO and cat urine. Where do I start? I'm gonna start with the good stuff before I move on to stuff that isn't bad, it's just it turned up in the dis most disgusting condition. I'm going to share with you my pre-loved haul. I'm gonna start by sharing with you the first, skirt, the first skirt that got me into all of this. It's from Chanel and you can see it's got the original, so this is a 1993 Chanel skirt. It was 137 pounds, which includes the shipping. It's uh, wool and then on the back, it's got the original 24 karat gold plated buttons. It's an immaculate condition. I was actually really surprised. It was in better condition than I thought. And it's even got on the inside, it's got the original vintage labels. So they have actually written, someone's actually written on here in pen, kind of, no, no, it's not 93. It's, it's 92. Okay, this is even older. So this is the first skirt that I purchased. And when it turned up, I thought I have scored an absolute bargain here. There's something about that in a second though that I'm gonna to talk to you about because it doesn't fit. And you might want to know why it doesn't fit. So I'll, I'll come on to that. Then this one got me thinking, by the way, everything, well not everything, that skirt I think turned up in one of these. So it's, it was like, um, you know, it's got like a snap closure on the back. Not everything did though. So the second skirt that I saw, this one does fit and I have to tell you why as, as well. This is a 2005 Chanel skirt. It's slightly, it was more tweed than that actually. And when you look at the, the, the tweed uh, kind of weave on it close up, it actually looks quite like houndstooth. And then it's also got there, it's very, very discreet, but it's got, got the Chanel uh, logo, just really, really tiny. So why doesn't this first one fit? Oh, by the way, this one was 125 pounds, including shipping. Why does one fit and the other one doesn't? This is the shocking thing that I wanted to share with you because it blew my mind when I figured this out. And if any of you are thinking, mm, I might have a browse for something pre-loved, you need to see this before you do it. I have got three skirts here. I've got the 1992 version on the top. I have then got the 2005 version on the middle. And then underneath, I have a 2019 version. All of these skirts are a French size 38, which is a UK 10. Let me tell you, the 1992 version, when it turned up, I can get it on and I can zip it up, but it looks, it looks too small. When I tried this on, I thought, why on earth is it not fitting? Because I'm always a size 38 in Chanel. Sometimes I might be a 36 on the bottom half. So I was kind of scratching my head as to why this didn't fit. When the 2005 version arrived and I lined the three skirts up, I realized what was going on here. I think that over the years, sizing has got bigger. So actually in 1992, I wouldn't be a size 10. I'd probably be a size 12 to 14. And I think you can tell the difference here. We're not talking about centimeters. Around the hip, there's a good one inch difference between the 92 and the 2005. I would say there is then a two inch difference between the 2019 version and the other two. And so this is something I wanted to warn you of before you go and order. It's something that I wish I did on this skirt. Um, make sure that you ask the seller for waist and hip measurements, or if you're looking in a jacket, make sure you get that as well, because that, um, that completely caught me off guard. But two really good skirts there. This is probably my favorite thing. I, while I was looking at that, I had my eye on this, which is a Chanel tweed jacket. Down here, it's got the Camellia buttons. And these buttons, they feel, they're actually metal. So they're quite heavy. They're not plastic or anything. 
this here is kind of um, felt. And actually, I've just noticed, if I can show you, there's almost a tiny bit of sparkle in it. Don't know if that's showing. And the seller on this, I was really happy when I opened it and the seller had included the coat hanger. I was really pleased with that. This was £600. Now, in case you're thinking, because it kind of makes sense, in case you're thinking £600 is not a very good deal, listen to this. There is a, right now, in the winter collection, if there's any of it left, there is a jacket that is very similar to this. If you have a look at the sleeves, the sleeves on both are very similar. Let me tell you how much Chanel jackets, not coats, they're even more. I'm going to tell you how much the jackets are because they are more than the bags. So the black version, which looks like this, this is £4,910. I've also picked out two other versions in case you're thinking, yeah, well, that's just a one off. The second version is this pink tweed, which is part of the recent cruise collection this is 4750 and then i also found this other version which i thought i'd include this is actually more of an anorak but it's a yellow tweed this is 5010 pounds the seller originally wanted a thousand for it and it had already been reduced quite a lot since then at one point it was up for 2000 and i just made a, uh, an offer at 600 they accepted it and i was just like yes I also purchased two skirts from Alaya. One I'm wearing here, which I really like. This is quite, I might actually wear this on Christmas day. I'm in tier four, so we're not allowed to go anywhere on Christmas day. We can go for a walk, but you can't see your family. Uh, but I might dress up anyway, you know, why not? So I bought two skirts. This one, how much did I pay for this? This skirt was 138 pounds. And then the second one was £169. And again, to give you an idea, I'm going to um, give you two examples here. So I knew that Alaya skirts were over £1,000 just for the skirt. And I've got a couple of examples to show you that are new and they're currently available. This one is £1,360. And the second one, which is a bit cheaper, is £1,140. So to have bought this... For 169 and this one what did I pay for this I paid 138 pounds for this you know to to have bought both of these items for that money I, I was really pleased about so they're the Alaya things I've got one Dior thing but before we do that let's talk about this disgusting <laughs> I've got to show you I've got to show you I mean it's okay now but let me tell you when I got it it was not here we have a Prada coat. Okay, it smells fine. This, um, let me unpack it. It's been to the dry cleaner. So it's a double breasted Prada coat wool. It's got a really nice kind of skirted bit on the bottom. And the story behind this is this, I found out the price of this as well. So this was originally 2,230 pounds. And I made an offer and got it for 250 Great deal, but, and if you're going to buy pre-loved, with everything I bought, um, some of the stuff smell really mildly of other people's perfumes. Not really bad, and in fact, when I aired it out, the smell had gone, but I had everything dry cleaned anyway. But this was another level of disgusting. So it turned up, it was crumpled in a bag, and when I so it was in like a bin bag kind of thing whoever sent it must have had no shame this was covered in the person's hair long blonde hairs front and back it was also covered in what looked like cat hairs and it stank of what I can only describe as kind of like um kind of like cat urine and I could smell it before I opened the bin liner thing. And I, I didn't twig at the time. I was like, oh, something stinks. I, then I opened it and the smell hit me and it was disgusting. And I emptied it onto the floor, wooden floor, not carpet, so I can clean it after. The most embarrassing thing was having to take it to the dry cleaners, which I did. I didn't even leave it an hour. I put my shoes on, I went down the road. 
I gave it to the dry cleaner and I go in there a lot and they know me and I was really embarrassed because they must have thought you were disgusting but I just kind of I was going to explain but I thought there's no point you know just leave it and go now it smells fine it smells fine now the other downside to this this also does not quite fit why well the reason why I could technically return it I can get it on but it's quite tight only on the shoulders and the arms so the lady who had listed it the lady who has no shame the lady who had listed it had said that it was a french size 38 which again is a uk size 10. when it turned up and i put it on and it's like this i thought why is this not fitting and then i realized prada isn't french it's italian when i looked at the logo it's not a french 38 it's an italian 38 which what is that um an eight yeah, a UK eight. So at that point, I thought, oh God, not only did it stink and I've, you know, but um, it doesn't fit. And it, and I, if she'd listed it right, I would have known not to buy it. But at that point, I thought I can't be bothered to send it back because I've just paid 15 pounds to have it cleaned. Or well, it might've been more than that actually. And then I'd have to go through the rigmarole of posting it back and what have you. If you're going to do the vintage thing as well, can I just say, touch wood, not that I've had any problems, but um, always use a credit card. And if you're going to pay with PayPal, that's great. But unless you've got a balance that you're using, hook your credit card up to your PayPal and pay with PayPal through your credit card. And then you're covered twice. I say this because there are so many horror stories at the moment of people getting parcels that turn up and they're empty and then the retailer doesn't believe them. I actually had one of you a couple of weeks ago and I didn't even know what to say. It was a situation that um, I thought, I don't even know what I'd do in that situation. I'd phone up the credit card, but if I hadn't paid for it that way, I think I'd be stuck. So you were saying that you bought a wire cell bag and that um, it came via DHL and when you got it, it had been tampered with. And when you opened it, there was no bag inside. There was no nothing. And the retailer was like, well, it was in there when we sent it. So buy kind of thing. And um, I actually had a pair of boots turn up yesterday. They're not expensive at all. They're just for walking in. And guess what? Look at this picture. It had a rip in it and someone has blatantly opened the box like pulled the a bit down and then not only that but they've actually opened the shoe box as well just to see what it is thankfully nothing was taken but there's a lot of it going on at the moment so to protect yourself and if you get anything that you think's fake as well that's a whole other thing then always pay with a credit card and i've always found the credit cards really good actually at um helping final item is this skirt which is really old. This is from probably 2000. And, when was Raf Simmons in Dior? Because it is a Raf Simmons uh, era skirt. It's wool. I'll show you a close up. It's wool and it's kind of pink uh, houndstooth. The reason why I bought this back in the summer, because the pre full collection had come out, there was a skirt just like this where it's quite fitted on the waist and then it flares out below. And that skirt was £1,800. And I thought, do you know, I can't justify £1,800. In, in previous years, I probably would. And don't get me wrong, if I really liked it, I might have thought a, a few times. But this year, because of everything that's gone on, I, I haven't been buying the ready-to-wear stuff that I have in previous years. So anyway, um, found this skirt on Vestair. I ended up getting it for less though by going off Vestair. So what I did, it was 250 pounds on Vestair. Vestair added what the customs was gonna be on the value. It also added on sh the shipping, which was actually quite a lot. And then they added on their own uh, verification fee where they check that it's real. Now, I thought, oh, do you know something? It's gone from a skirt that's 250 to a skirt that is now for over 400 pounds. And it's not that new, you know, I don't really want to spend that on it. Anyway, I noticed the seller 
actually was a business seller and they had a shop. And I googled their shop, their website came up, the skirt was on their website for £50 cheaper than on Vesto Collective, probably because they're not paying fees. They also didn't charge me the customs and their shipping fee was, it was about £10. I mean, Vestair wanted a lot because I, I guess because it's coming from Asia. But um, when it turned up as well, I didn't get charged any UK customs. So I ended up getting this for £210. Now, the final thing is something that some of you have seen already, but I wanted to include a vintage bag that I bought this year. And it's this, which was my dream bag when I was a teenager. And it's the Fendi Spy in the mini size. This came in two sizes and I never really liked the larger one. It was a bit too big for me and it kind of had that flap that came down there. I always wanted the mini and I wanted the mini in the Zucker print because you could get this, I think it was all over leather or you could get it so that this was leather and this was black and I always wanted this print. This I purchased on Farfetch because they've got a pre-loved section as well. This was about £700, um, but I've been looking around for ages on the internet and it didn't come up and I thought as well, the good thing to buying on Farfetch is that if I don't like it, if I think it's fake, no questions asked, I can just return it. Whereas with Vestair, it seems to be a lot more of a complicated process. And if you think something's fake, I don't even know what you do, whether they disagree with you, I'm not sure.